It's not rare for Elon Musk to voice his ideas publicly. He recently questioned Buffett's public persona. When asked by the New York Times if Buffett was overrated, he responded that the grandfatherly figure is maybe overstating the case. Buffett, on the other hand, has been somewhat more subdued when discussing Musk. The two men are comparable in that they're both extremely wealthy. Musk has a $190 billion personal net worth, meanwhile Buffett's assets exceed $100 billion. But if you look a little closer, you'll see that they're two very different types of billionaires. Most people agree that Warren Buffett is the best investor of all time. He serves as the chairman and chief executive officer of Berkshire Hathaway, a holding firm that typically provides its stockholders with annual returns of about 20%. That's without making significant investments in tech firms. He famously claimed that he doesn't really understand tech businesses, making it difficult to predict their future value, which is why he has mostly shielded away from them. However, he acknowledged that he made a mistake by delaying purchasing Amazon and Google shares years ago. Buffett prefers index funds like the S&P 500 over picking individual firms to invest in because they are pre-assembled baskets of stocks that offer better security and diversity. Buffett wants to invest in low-risk securities in order to play it safe. His buying and holding approach spans decades. He and Musk are fundamentally different from one another in that Musk is high risk, high reward, and has the potential for extremely big losses as well. He invested all of the proceeds from the $180 million he made when the online bank he headed, which was later acquired by eBay and changed its name to PayPal, into three businesses. Musk would have been left with nothing if things had not worked out, but he was ready to take the chance. Buffett makes an effort to minimize risk for his investors. He favors investing in businesses with wide moats, much to how medieval castles were surrounded by a ditch filled with water for defense. In the business world, a moat shields a company from rivals by giving it some form of advantage, such as the ability to create goods for less money thanks to more affordable access to raw materials. Musk disagrees that this is the right course of action. In contrast, what matters is the velocity of invention. In his case, that means building starships quickly and ramping up Tesla production. He even said, if your only defense against invading armies is a moat, you will not last long. Buffett responded by arguing in favor of moats and asserting that Elon may turn things upside down in some areas. In reference to Berkshire Hathaway's investment in candy, Musk tweeted, I don't think he'd want to take us on in candy. The American candy maker sees candies is owned by Berkshire. Musk responded with a few playful tweets saying, Then I'm going to create a moat and fill it with candy. Warren won't be able to hold back from investing. But that wasn't the end of Musk's tweets on candy. I'm establishing a candy company and it's going to be awesome. I am extremely super serious, he wrote. It's safe to conclude that Musk isn't really interested in launching a candy company. However, he and Buffett are in a direct battle for supremacy. The market for electric vehicles is expanding and Berkshire Hathaway is establishing itself there. Charlie Munger, Buffett's business colleague, persuaded him to invest in a small Chinese automaker more than 10 years ago, which is Build Your Dreams, also known as BYD, and it also stands as Tesla's rival. With Buffett significantly engaged in the auto insurance sector, Musk is prepared to challenge it. Musk believes that personal auto insurance may eventually make up a third of Tesla's revenue, therefore the company aims to start selling it in more US states. That would put Tesla and Berkshire Hathaway on a collision course. Insurance, including Geico, accounts for almost a third of company revenue. Buffett brushes off any sense of threat, once remarking, I'd bet against any company in auto business, getting into insurance. Musk stated in Rogan's podcast that he believed there were two types of billionaires who shouldn't be viewed as indistinguishable those who become wealthy through product creation and design, and those who amassed enormous wealth through stock market trading. Musk did add that he does find value in what Buffett does, despite the fact that it seems like a harsh judgment. He used the example of attempting to decide whether to invest in Pepsi or Coca-Cola. Choosing which company needs more funding was described as a boring job by Musk, although he does believe it is a crucial task. Speaking of Coca-Cola, it just so happens to be a favorite investment and beverage of Warren Buffett. He consumes up to five cans every day, one of which he drinks with a $3.50 McDonald's meal every morning. Buffett has a reputation for leading a modest lifestyle, the identical Omaha home that the Oracle of Omaha paid $31,500 for in 1958 is currently where he resides. Musk also leads a very frugal lifestyle. When things get difficult, he has been known to set up camp in Tesla's factory, and his primary property is reported a $50,000 house in Boca Chica, South Texas. They share yet another thing in common. They have promised to donate the majority of their wealth. In Musk's case, he has pledged to develop a city on Mars and give away half of it on Earth. You should unquestionably subscribe to our channel if you want to stay current on the most recent information regarding Elon Musk and his businesses or Warren Buffett and his investment. Well, that's about it for today. If you find this video helpful, kindly click the like and subscribe button. Also, you might want to leave a comment below. We love hearing from you. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.
If you enjoyed this video, you're going to want to watch one of these two videos right here. Enjoy!